Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about the basics of piston assembly. Before starting with the designing aspects, let's first go through what is actually a piston assembly. What is a piston, what is a connecting rod and what is its function. To me, piston is the heart of the engine. It converts the energy produced by the combustion of the fuels to the mechanical energy, like the rotary motion, the one we actually get in the shaft. Okay, so let's start with the designing of the piston head. So first we select the, uh, we select the plane, we select the X plane here and let's uh, sketch the cross section of the piston. And in designing we will now revolve this cross section about uh, this vector, about this uh, Z axis and we will get the 360 degree, the solid model. Now uh, let's sketch the cross section here uh, and let me just make the grooves for the piston rings. Yeah, there are actually three piston rings, two compression rings and one oil ring. The compression rings, as you all know, uh, helps uh, prevents the what leakage of the gases due to the high pressure in the pistons and the uh, sorry in the combustion chamber. And the last one for the oil ring, it prevents the oil uh, the blow by losses. It helps in the blow by losses. Okay. Now uh, that our uh, piston is ready, the basic structure is ready. Now uh, let's uh, create the detailing, let's go for the detailing of it. Uh, I won't take very long because indeed this is a very long video. So just cope up with me and you will, I guess at the end of the video you will learn something from this. Okay, uh, let's uh, create this rectangle. Why I am creating this, we will get to it shortly. Uh, we would like to create the plane on which we will create the holes. Yeah, uh, let's subtract it, select the body uh, from it and show result now uh, see the result uh, we have scraped out a part of the cylindrical surface to create a flat plane on which we will like to create our uh, the circular holes uh, which will actually hold the uh, small end of the connecting rod and the uh, guardian pin okay let's say constraint okay uh, no problem let's uh, do it with it uh, uh, let's now extrude it. My sketch is ready. Okay, so finish sketch and let's extrude it. Hmm. So we create the hole. Okay, so subtract it from the body, select the body, make sure. Okay, so we have uh, deleted it. Now uh, we would like to create the uh, flange around the a hole so create single curve huh? it's very important that you select the single curve here otherwise it will be erroneous okay so zoom in let me zoom in a bit and adjust the thickness yeah you can manipulate the thickness as you want yeah okay and let's see uh, the extension yeah the extension should be such that it should not touch the, in the uh, minimum allowance between the two ends of the hole and the two ends of the bearing that will hold the budget pin it should not the uh, distance between them should not be less than the width of the small end of the connecting rod uh, what i'm saying is we'll get to know after we design the connecting rod okay so let's uh, this very easy let's now copy this feature totally about this explain okay so as you see the feature is totally complete and now uh, what i would do i would i would sketch i would take a plane and i will like to sketch another feature now what is the problem with this uh, model actually as you see uh, in any designing the the weight of the piston is an essential factor so what happens is that if the weight of the piston is more then the tendency of the secondary inertia force is also more and now what is this it's actually uh, what happens that uh, due to the reciprocating motion uh, a secondary inertia force is created which actually reduces the net effective force acting on the connecting rod so in that case uh, we would uh, as a designer uh, we, we should always try to minimize the weight so how can we minimize the weight by removing the unwanted or removing the excess materials so yeah so what i'm trying to do here with the concept that i'm allowing is that uh, we should uh, we i am creating two uh, like i'm creating here one and i will measure it in the later portion of the video 
uh, I am creating a surface which I will extrude. I am creating a solid surface which I will extrude and then subtract from the uh, main piston body. This, uh, what will it do? It will scrape out the extra material. L let's see how I do it. Okay, now my uh, this thing is done. So let's copy it about the axis. Okay, mirror it about the axis. This axis. Okay, done. Now what I will do? I will just extrude it. Uh, select the body, subtract. Okay, now the symbol the vector. Okay, this is done. Then we connect it. Works. Okay. So just uh, give the directions, give the magnitudes. Okay, just uh, through. Yeah. Now see what happens. We have created. We have removed this extra part of the piston by this spline. And no, as I have uh, no specific design parameters, so I am just. Uh, making it a hypothetical spline but yeah according to the design parameters you have to do it if if it is needed just for this the demonstration video i'm just showing you i'm just i have just selected this arbitrary spline okay now just blending the edges because as you know as i have told earlier that sharp edges should be avoided in case of any designing to uh, minimize the stress concentrations the stress concentrations lead to fatigue failure and this thing this piston head is uh, is always under tremendous temperature and pressure because it is always inside the combustion chamber okay so as i have blended the edges as you see my uh, piston design piston head is complete oh sorry wait it's not complete yet one more thing a tiny detail but it's very important from a point of designer to know that i would like to create a protrusion on the cylinder head I mean sorry the piston head why is this as you know in modern automobiles uh, we have a spark injection uh, sorry uh, direct injection systems in uh, spark ignition engines we have direct injection systems now what is that uh, the injector is uh, located right next to the inlet uh, valve and it sprays uh, it injects the uh, fuel directly into the cylinder chamber and uh, the use of carburetor is obsolete nowadays as you know so what happens is that in order to maximize or in uh, to have a good mixture of the air and fuel our objective should be to get the maximum turbulence in the inlet air as possible so that there is a good mixing so what we do uh, suppose uh, where the side i'm creating the sketch is my inlet side so uh, what as a designer what should be my objective is to design the piston head in such a way that uh, when the it, it when it sucks the air the groove should be such that it al it uh, the groove allows the maximum uh, vortex uh, tendency so while the air enters it it has turbulence high, high turbulence and the fuel mixes correctly so as you can see uh, our piston head design is complete now let's go to connecting dot design okay okay now let's uh, go with the connecting dot design Connecting rod design is actually very simple. It's it's there's nothing to revolve, there's nothing to rotate. It's, it's just a slab. You have to be very careful with the uh, extruding and subtracting operations. Otherwise, it's very simple. So uh, let's create the basic sketch. Now I'm trimming out the excess portions. Okay, so our basic sketch is ready. Now I will just extrude it. Uh, connected curves have selected okay it will be easier if we select a single curve okay let's do it uh, give it a value it's, give it any arbitrary value it doesn't matter because we are not following a straight design book just i'm just showing this for your demonstration okay uh, now we create another sketch uh, now what this sketch will be doing this will be uh, we, we the cross section of the connecting rod is not seen throughout the small end the small center the small circle that part is known as the small end center and the other part is known as the big end center so and one most important thing is that the uh, 
the part connecting the small end center and the big end center is of uh, rectangular cross section uh, more specifically it has i cross section so what happens it gives maximum rigidity to this connecting rod because connecting rod is subjected to high stress concentrations the stress is very high because as it it is the thing that con that transmits the power from the piston to the crankshaft okay now let's uh, create another uh, what happened here uh, i missed a bit okay sorry uh, i have to subtract this part to uh, yeah i have to subtract it let's adjust the thickness okay done so this is done so what i will do now is just simply just mirror this feature and okay so first blend it just blend it yeah uh, as i as i told you the function of blending yeah now what i will do the half part is ready to ease our work we will just mirror this yeah just mirror it about its opposite face now our crankshaft uh, sorry connecting rod is ready Now let's start with the assembly of the piston. I have not shown here the designing of the guardian pin because it's very simple. It's just a hollow cylinder. Select the sketch, make the, give the correct dimensions, and you will get it. It's just a hollow cylinder, nothing more. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, select the assembly. Yeah, the piston head. Make it absolute origin. Now we add the components. Now add the connecting rod. Yeah, make sure it is uh, uh, the placement in placements is selected as by constraint. Okay, so what constraint? First constraint is to align it, touch align. So what is the thing that will be aligned? This will be touching. So the center line, we first uh, yeah, the center line should be aligned. So that's a constraint developing. Yeah, we can see that is all it. And now we have to uh, move it. So let's move it about the specified location. Sorry, uh, this uh, can't be like that. Okay, so now uh, we have to give another constraint. That is, we have to prefer to, yeah, touch it. We have to touch it. Yeah, this surface will be touching this. Surface. Okay, so as you can see, the connecting rod has placed itself very firmly inside the piston head, and what is left is now the addition of the pin. Okay, so uh, we don't need any constraint. Uh, we just have to move it. It will be easier in the assembly like that. Okay, so just move it about and just insert it properly. It's very easy actually. It's uh, nothing. There's nothing. The pin. It will be very important when we will do our DMU kinematics in this. The kinematics part is very important for the pin. Otherwise, in assembly, just yeah, just like it. So thus we have the total piston assembly, the piston head, the connecting rod, and the gadget pin. So yeah, this is our assembly. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked it. This is me, Vikramjit, signing off. Hasta la vista.